The Herzliya Conference is Israel's premier global policy gathering, exclusively drawing together international and Israeli participants from the highest levels of government, business, and academia to address the most pressing national, regional, and global issues. The Herzliya Conference is considered one of the top conferences of its kind, ranked among the World Economic Forum in Davos and the Munich Security Conference. Over the years, the Herzliya Conference has become a stage for world leaders, past and present. The Herzliya Conference is also a stage for the formation of ideas, assessments, and concrete recommendations that have had a demonstrable impact on Israel's national policy, and in many cases are later implemented. In many areas, the Herzliya Conference is the first to place items on the national agenda. Then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon first presented the roadmap to peace to the world at the 2003 Herzliya Conference. One year later, Sharon used the 2004 Herzliya Conference as the platform from which to declare Israel's unilateral disengagement from Gaza. Prime Minister Netanyahu first introduced Israel's heritage trail to the world at the most recent conference. The 2010 conference also featured Dr. Salam Fayyad, Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, making it the first time a Palestinian leader chose to address an Israeli audience. This will give me an opportunity to speak to you quite frankly from the heart as to the issues that confront us all, beginning with what he gave by way of what I believe to be, if I may say so, a rather compelling case for a two-state solution from an Israeli point of view. To participate in the peace process. The 2010 conference focused on the core issues facing Israel and the Middle East. Various issues impacting the region were examined, as well as their respective effects on Israel's national resilience. As the Iranian nuclear threat looms over the region, the conference examined the threat's potential scenarios. Experts analyzed the consequences, implications, and strategic fallout of Iran being at the nuclear weapons threshold, as well as the advantages and plausibility of the deterrence and containment of Iran. Also addressed were the implications of further nuclear proliferation in the region, creating a polynuclear Middle East. I think it is a mistake to believe that we're on the verge of, uh, of a cascade of nuclear proliferation in the Middle East as a result of an Iranian nuclear weapon success. I think it's very important not to let the other countries that we have in mind believe that we have given up any effort to discourage they're following Iran. Although the recovery from the world economic crisis is coming sooner and faster than initially expected, the fragility of this recovery is clear. Some experts say that the last two years constituted only the first wave of the crisis. Conference discussants examined this possibility as well as other scenarios and the steps the global market must take in order to avert a second wave. When is the right time to exit? And when you look at the figures, many governments are willing to exit and say, okay, the crisis is over, now we can turn to something different. Politically, everybody can understand this. But it's not that easy. And to exit too early can be very, very problematic. Most Americans are far more concerned. Both critics and proponents have always viewed U.S.-Israel relations as special. Yet the dual elections which brought forth the current administrations formed what some say is a rift in U.S.-Israel relations. The strains between the two administrations were discussed and analyzed openly by leaders at the conference. These relationships, they need to be focused on policies, goals, and steps that we take to reach those goals together in partnership. That's how you build a relationship that withstands strain, that, keeps, that can keep focused and can overcome a crisis, in quotation marks, if there is one, and I think that that process exists between the United States and Israel and will continue. There's no sense wasting time and energy on my The connection between oil, terrorism, and instability in the Middle East is a reality. This year's conference brought together various experts to discuss why the dependence on oil is most likely the worst global threat today, and how the West's consumption of oil places it in a dangerous cycle of funding terror states and then spending on security against them. One would make a substantial dent in this problem that we have of paying for both sides in the war on terrorism. That's not really a very good strategy to pay uh, for both sides. 
and we pay for their side when we buy gasoline and diesel, and we pay for our side when we pay taxes to deal with security measures and military and the rest. That's a losing way to proceed. The Herzliya Conference holds interactive focus group discussions with officials, experts, and business executives. Held off the record and by invitation only, these discussions provide up-to-date intelligence and the most relevant input for risk assessment and global analysis in today's increasingly complex and multi-crisis environment. Since its establishment in 2000, the Herzliya Conference has become the annual summit meeting of the most influential international and Israeli leaders. Herzliya's deliberations frame critical issues, facilitate informed debates, and yield concrete and applicable strategies. Having welcomed over 3,000 participants from Israel and abroad to the 2010 conference, the Herzliya conference can look forward to continuing to be the center stage for the articulation of policy and the place where decision makers meet to plan the future of Israel and the region.